Okay, back in the studio again. Just a little bit. Where's What's going on, guys? Today I'm here with my older brother, Mike. Pleasure to have you, bro. I'm old dad. <laughs> I'm just kidding. <laughs> back with my dad, the guy who's taught me so many different knots, so many different fishing techniques. And he's here to show us one more time how to tie our favorite knot. And that's the T-knot, right? Where last time, we heard that it was a little hard to see how to tie it because our hands were kind of in the way of everything. But this time we're gonna record it again so that you're directly above us and you can follow along and tie with us at the same time. Right. So today we're talking about this rig that does not tangle against itself. Here's like a standard rig right here, right? If you're, if you're fishing with this, in the current, it gets spun around, around, around. Look, it gets all tangled up. You don't want that. You don't want that to happen when you're fishing. Right? Mm hmm So my dad, we showed this rig last year how to tie this T-knot right here. Right? This is the one my dad just tied. And this is a great knot to learn so that it won't get tangled up by itself. Look at this. It just spins. It just spins. It doesn't get tangled. Because this arm right here, this arm right here allows it to be held outwards. It's naturally away from this line. Natural. And we've done a video like this before. Um, Y'all seem to love it. We actually, we've met so many people who have used this knot before. So do you remember? Yeah. People have come up to you before, right? They say, oh, thank you, thank you. Thank you so much. Yeah. And then we see their knots and they're using T-knots too. Yeah. And you know where that comes from. But I also have a variation of this same knot that even intensifies the arm right here. And you'll see exactly what I'm talking about. This variation I think is, is also a really good addition to your knot arsenal. It's a very, very similar method, but you'll see the differences. Anyways, why don't you show them how to tie this knot real quick. And, uh, 10 inches, mm -hmm. right on 10 inches I just, so this is about 10 inches right here. So see my, see my thumb thing? Mm -hmm. That's where I saw turning my knot. I will do five times, six times, five times, one, two, three, four, five, right? Mm -hmm. Then I hold my finger here. So put, see this one here? I'll put it through the hole. And you still hold on to it. You need to straighten it out. Okay? You need to straighten it out. Now, once you straighten it out, you need to make sure everything fine, everything good. That You see number eight? Right? Two hole in there. You start pulling in tight, slowly. If you see anything tangling, you need to straighten them out by pulling this two space in here. Now it looks pretty good. Now we just see that how slowly you're pulling. And see why I asked you to leap 10 inches? Because this is where your hook go, right? This is where you're tied and whatever you're going to do this. You need some length for your line. See that? You don't want to go too fast, but you might, you know, heat it up the line or turn on you, it twist. Right? Let's straighten them out. Now, we do the T. I will do my two finger. See that you turn around. This is called a dropper loop too. Yeah, this is called a dropper loop. So you see the, my finger here. This finger hold the line and turn into this this finger here, you just hold the other line. It's a little bit tricky, but you'll get a hold of it. So make sure your finger in here hold it in here. Now you start turning. If you don't hold this one, you might have a hard time to turning this. You see this? Just don't get confused, you turn. Right? And then you pull this one through it. Make sure that line coming out. 
the less time into the circle, the whole will be better off for you. See, you see, I want to make sure that turn that you did tie to this knot in here, right? Then you pull. You like again, slow, not too fast. Okay, so if you have issue that this line was sticking out a little further and have a little extra line in here, what you do, you straight out this. When you straight this out, and then you pull this one through, so it will tighten up a little more. You see that? Give a second or two, and then pull it, pull it, pull it. Now you got it, right? So this is your T-knot. Nice. You see how nice and um, tight that knot to the T? That's very critical. If not, that thing will flopping around. That means give length to your bait or your hook will go everywhere. Then you're tangling in, in here, tangling in there. So you're really critical point to make sure okay so let's put a hook on it right now so if you want to put a float on we got glow floats we've got um these orange and yellow floats right here look like sand fleas we got neon ones and we got circle hooks so why don't we put a float on and put on a, a hook and show what people what you're talking about here okay. so let's put on a a light globe So we'll put on a glow float here. And this is great for low light situations. And then we'll put on a circle hook. To our circle hook, it's common size. So I like to put it in the front. Uh, Keep your hand I like right to there. turn twice. Right? You see when they, this is the proper way to do it. Perfect. Sinker down here. Scribble on the top. That looks good, Dad. So and this, this is, can be adjusted by, you know, you, you, you want your flow to be here so that the flow will be here and then, you know, basically be this if you want. See, so. with this arm, it doesn't get tangled because it pushes it outwards. So there's, a, there's just one main difference between my T-knot and my dad's T-knot. Mine is, instead of doing five loops here and, and 10 loops here, I'm gonna do like 10 loops and 15. And you'll see exactly what I'm talking about. When building this T-knot, first of all, like my dad said, measure out the length that you want and mine is the length of the table. You won't be able to see it right now, but I'm doing the length of the table. First, we want to fold it in half and have about 10 inches. Then we're gonna grab it and wrap about 10 times. And you wanna keep everything really tight. See this, how tight this is? Lubricate it. And you want to do this nice and slow, just like my dad said. Just do it nice and slow. There's no rush to get this tightened down because once it's tightened, there's no untightening it. So go nice and slow. I like to put a little saliva on there. There we go. And that's the first knot right there. You can see how this knot is much longer than this one. And this way, it'll keep, it'll keep your hooks out extended a little bit further, you see? Either way works great. This way is actually more challenging and I mess up this way a lot more. 
This way is quicker and you can get it done real, like, real efficiently. This, you might need to take a couple times over and over again. It's just a little more difficult to tie. Next step, we're gonna do this dropper loop. And instead of doing it like seven times, we're gonna do it like 10 to 15 times. The more, the merrier, because it's gonna give this a really nice solid foundation. So, let's see if I can do this. Grip it like this. Two train tracks like this, right? And then we're just gonna start twisting. Two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven, twelve, thirteen, fourteen, fifteen. And one more for good measure, 16. So now you see this little hole that I've created right here? You see that? We're gonna push this through. Okay. Now it's through the hole. We're gonna start tightening it down now. And again, keep everything tight. You see this? See, I'm holding this part in my mouth. I'm holding this part with my mouth here, see? And then pulling. There, cinch that down. And now you can even do more wraps and it'll be, it'll be longer than that. <clears throat> but like I said, the more wraps you do, the harder it is to tie it down. And you're gonna have to get a little bit more dexterity to really be able to master getting all these, these loops on here. But this for now, I think is great. And look, let's look at the difference. It's not much of a difference, but it is a difference. Here's just the standard T-knot, and here's the T-knot that is more exaggerated. It has a longer arm and has a longer T-part, which I think helps keep the line out a little bit further. Now, I liked my dad's method where you, he cut off one bit right here, like this. This knot is so good that you can actually cut this off and this is still very strong, okay? So now we've got a long arm here that I'm gonna put. Hey, Aaron, pick your favorite color here. What do you want me to use? Hmm. <laughs> Tell me when to stop. Stop. Pink? <laughs> How did I know? Okay. Now these are our custom hand-tied I mean, these are our custom hand-painted floats. I've got p hot pink. I've got this sand flea, yellow, orange color, which are our top seller. This is freaking bomb, guys. And then we've got our glow-in-the-dark ones for low-light situations. And these are just really great for color attracting, for keeping your bait afloat. And all you're really gonna do is just feed it through like this, right? And then we're gonna need a hook, thank you. Use octopus circle. This is a little long, so I'm gonna cut this down. And then we're gonna tie a snell knot on here. There we go and cut off all the tag ends. Like my dad said, it's important to cut off the tag ends. You don't want that stuff hanging out. And there we have it. So now I'm gonna finish tying up this rig the same way with a two-way swivel, thanks dad. And then a snap swivel at the bottom. And what we're gonna do here is we're gonna take this outside. We're gonna put it into a fish tank and see what it looks like underwater so I can show you how it really is effective.
here we are outside set now we actually bought this cheap little fish tank um, filled it with sand waited for a little bit for everything to settle and uh, now it's ready to show you what the rig looks like underwater in a beach setting okay but first I'm gonna put on some of our bait kind of see what it looks like underwater here are neon shrimpy bits these are really nice because these are real shrimp that we have um, preserved and they're neon throughout we added a special special ingredient to turn it this throughout the entire shrimp without getting on your fingers this is a really nice bait to attract fish like whiting and pompano i'm gonna do a little bit of the all right which one dad what should we do orange or pink pink's fine pink with pink yeah pink and orange too. pink and orange yeah. and this shrimp is nice and tough it smells great mess free and that's exactly how i would hook it up just like that and this will be perfect for like a whiting or a pompano or maybe a red drum something will eat this okay let's see what this let's see what this looks like underwater here you go dad okay ready i'm dropping it now how's that looking dad lovely yeah that's it that looks great okay so when i drop it in immediately you can see the how the the float stays up <clears throat> it keeps the bait up as well and the arm is projecting the entire rig outwards so even when i move it like this back and forth back and forth it's not going to get tangled on itself it keeps it out nice and uh nice and stiff and that looks great this this shrimpy bit it's looking really nice underwater as well. And the longer it sits under there, the more it starts to absorb water, um, the more lifelike it starts to look. Uh, and when, I, when, I'm, when I'm fishing, a lot of times I'm, I'm even just, I'm bringing, the, I'm bringing the sinker back like this. And you can see how the pyramid sinker keeps it from rolling all over the place. And the pyramid sinker makes this little poof of, um, of like cloud. It could be little clams coming up, little crustaceans coming up from this. Moving that sinker around sometimes is beneficial because it can attract things that are around the area. And this is the improved T-knot and how it looks under the water. You can see how long that, that arm is. Let's see, what, let's see what one without a float looks like and let's see one without as, as long of an arm looks like underwater next. Oh, yeah. Without the float, it just sinks down. Yeah. yeah. But that's okay too. Yeah. Down on the ground is great too because fish are just looking for things that are sloshing around in the waves. Mm -hmm. And when it's sloshing around, it's not staying still. It's going up and down, up and down. Look, go ahead, Dad. What would it look like when the waves are hitting it? It could be like this, floating around. Yeah, washing around in a circle and the fish will see that. They'll see that color and want to attack it. Gently, but normally, you know, the, the ocean waves are pretty strong, much stronger than this. Okay, so now we kind of see what it looks like underwater and how that arm really holds out all of the bait. You see that the float lifts the bait up, keeps it up and, a, and provides contrast. Um, and we see how when you don't have the float, the bait sinks to the ground, which is great too. It all depends on what you're looking to do. Uh, my personal preference, sometimes they don't want to hit with a float. Sometimes they want to hit with a float. So you're going to have to try both ways. I say get all three colors that we offer try different combinations with them on with them off try some of our new neon shrimpy bits if we have any left in stock but we have a whole line of different baits as well as different fishing rigs for you to try as well we just want to make fishing easy for you and we want to make it like very accessible and you can just pick up these things and get to the beach and catch some fish because a lot of times we waste a lot of time thinking about how to do it thinking about what to tie up if you just get these couple of rigs and you get these couple of baits and you get out there and just start casting, I can pretty much guarantee you, if you put it in the time, you're gonna catch some fish. Thank you guys for watching. We do informational videos like this all the time. We go fishing together and we do lots of really fun adventures. And if you like that kind of content, subscribe to our channel. Thank you guys for watching. And thanks dad for your help. See you guys next week.